If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Because of the presence of three batteries instead of just one, we're going to have to use Kirchhoff's rules, but before doing that, we need to draw in some currents. Now, in general, we draw currents exiting from the larger or positive terminal of the battery. So, for example, we can show a current that's projecting away from the 12 volt battery, and we can call that current I1. Similarly, with the 18 volt battery, we can show the current again projecting away from the positive or larger terminal of the battery, and so the current would flow in this direction, and we can call that I2. Now, I1 and I2 are going to converge at this junction, and then they're going to have to combine and move in this direction, down the middle of the circuit, and so we can call that I3. According to Kirchhoff's junction rule, the sum of the currents coming into the junction will equal the sum of the currents going out of the junction. And so in our drawing, we can see again that I1 as well as I2 are going into the junction, and then I3 is going out of the junction. So this will represent our first equation in solving the problem. Now we must next apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. And to do that, what we do is pick a starting point somewhere in the circuit and then travel around a loop within the circuit until we return to the same location that we started. So if we started at this red X, we can move in the direction shown by the red curve. And what we want to do is keep track of the so-called potential changes. We just need to remember that for a resistor, the potential change will equal the current times the resistance. So for example, starting at the red X, we move through the resistor right here. And if we look carefully, we can see that we would be passing through the 4 ohm resistor. And the current that's flowing through that resistor is I3. If you have any trouble seeing that, you can just imagine that I3 is continuing down the middle of the circuit and flowing through this resistor. So we would multiply the resistance of 4 ohms times the current of I3. Now, the only thing that we have to note additionally is that the movement is with the current. So as we move along the red path, we're moving with the current marked I3. Anytime you move with current, that represents a negative potential change. So as we develop an equation over here, we're going to write negative 4 times the current I3. We'll continue our way around the red path and then we'll encounter this resistor. Again, we would be moving with current, but this time it's the current marked I1. If you have any trouble seeing that current, you can just imagine that current I1 kind of backtracks this way. And so we would be moving indeed with that current. Again, that represents a negative potential change and it's the resistance times that current of I1. And then we encounter a battery and we're moving from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. When you move in that fashion through a battery, that's a positive potential change equal to whatever the potential of the battery is, in this case 12 volts. We continue along and then we turn this way. Now we're moving from the positive to the negative terminal of the battery and so that will represent a negative potential change equal to 3 volts. Once we return to where we started, we can set the overall potential change equal to 0. And what we're going to do is then simplify this equation. We're actually going to try to solve it for I1. So let's add 5I1 over to the right-hand side, and then also subtract the 12 and 3. And then to solve for I1, we could divide each term of the equation by 5. Now we're going to hold on to this equation as well, and we'll have to develop a third and final equation. And perhaps we can move our way around the rightmost loop to develop that third equation. Why don't we start right here? We'll mark it with a blue X. And we're going to travel in this direction around the rightmost loop, and then eventually return back to where we started. So moving from the positive to negative terminal of this battery represents a negative 3 volts potential change. Then we move again through this resistor flowing with the current marked I3. So with the current is a negative potential change, and it's equivalent to the resistance of 4 ohms times the current marked I3. And then we take a turn this way, and in this case, we're actually moving with the current marked I2. Again, if you can't see that, you just want to kind of find I2 and then sort of backtrack it all the way to here, and you would see that we would be moving with that current. So that's a negative potential change equal to the resistance of 3 ohms times I2. Then we move through the 2 ohm resistor, so going with the current is a negative potential change equal to 2 times the current of I2. Then we go from the negative to the positive terminal of this battery, and that would represent a positive potential change of 18 volts. And then finally we return to where we started so we could set this equal to zero. Now we're going to end up solving this equation for I2. So let's add the 3I2 and the 2I2 over to the right hand side to make 5I2. 
And in fact, we can also combine negative 3 and 18. We'll then divide each term by 5 so we can isolate i2. And this is an equation that we're going to hold on to. Notice that both i2 and i1 are solved in terms of i3. So we're going to take this expression for i2 and plug it into the first equation and take this expression for i1 and plug it in also to the first equation. And that way we'll have one equation with a single variable. And so here is that equation. What we're going to do is solve for i3. So let's gather the i3 terms over to the right side by adding the 0.8 i3 and the other 0.8 i3 to the right. We've also combined the 1.8 and 3. And then we can divide both sides by 2.6. And this is going to allow us to isolate i3, which turns out to be approximately 1.846 amps. Once we have this value for i3, we can go back and find i1 and i2 by plugging in the i3 into both equations. So we'll go ahead and do that and solve for i1 as well as i2. So here are the currents. Now, of course, we were asked to find the potential difference, which is delta V. We know that potential difference is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance value. Now, we have one, two, three, four resistances. And so we're going to have to make four calculations of delta V. Why don't we go ahead and call this resistor R1, since current one is flowing through it. We can call this resistor R2, since the current I2 is flowing through it. Actually, this resistor also has current I2 throwing, flowing through it, so we can call it maybe R2 prime. And then this resistor has the current of I3 flowing through it, so we can call that R3. So again, we're going to be setting up four calculations using this formula, the resistances that we just marked, and then all these currents. And so here are those setups. You might want to pause the video and just make sure you understand where all the numbers are getting plugged in. And then we'll pick up the calculator and simplify all these. So after simplifying, here are the final potential differences across the four resistors. Again, you just want to pause the video and make sure that you understand where each potential is going. And these turn out to be the four correct answers. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. You're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.